1 billion 400 million. That's the amount of times that lightning strikes our planet per year. That's 8 million times per day. 434,523. That's the number of kilometers per hour that the average lightning bolt moves. 240,000. That's the amount of lightning strike related incidents around the globe each year. 2,000. That's the amount of lightning strike related deaths each year. 1 in 60,000. That's the probability that you will get struck by lightning. 1. That's the amount of Roy Sullivan's in the world. And 7. That's the amount of times that Roy Sullivan was reportedly struck by lightning. And finally, zero. That's the amount of people who think you're clever when you comment something like, well, actually, Roy Sullivan isn't alive anymore, so there's actually not one Roy Sullivan. Because, buddy, ever heard of building suspense? Roy Cleveland Sullivan was born February 7th, 1912, in Greene County, West Virginia. Mm. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that joke. I don't know why I wrote that. I don't even know if it's West Virginia. He was child numero cuatro in a family of 11 kids, all raised by a loving mother and father who presumably were really, uh, really horny. Like all the time they must have been horny. Uh, I mean, citation needed, obviously. But like, if you have 11 kids, I'm gonna make some assumptions. That's just, that's how life is, sorry. Growing up around Blue Ridge Mountains, which by the way sounds like a beer brand, Roy loved the outdoors. So much so that he prioritized it over everything else and he never finished high school. However, that wasn't a problem for Roy, who joined the Civilian Conservation Corps and helped build the Shenandoah National Park, where he then subsequently worked as a park ranger until his retirement. Among friends and colleagues, Roy was often referred to as the human lightning conductor or the human lightning rod. And hold the fucking phone for just a a second number one the human lightning conductor might be the most cumbersome nickname to give to someone that has a three-letter name i don't think a name like roy really needs a nickname number two just a suggestion maybe don't turn your buddy's life trauma and near-death experience into a cute little nickname what's wrong with like royster roytown roy but i don't know what you call someone named roy but not the fucking human lightning rod. And speaking of which, number three, how are they calling him human lightning rod when his name is Roy? Human lightning Roy. It's right there. How does no one go, oh wait, hold on a fucking second. It's the dumbest shit. But I digress. So the reason that Roy got these cute little nicknames by his quirky little friends is that he, as I've already mentioned a few times in this video up to this point, uh, got struck by lightning several times throughout his life. Seven to be exact. Seven times. He was struck by lightning seven times. And I know that's wild and you know that's wild, but I think we need to stop for just one second and really consider how many fucking times seven actually is. That's one lightning strike for every wonder of the world, for every sea of the world, for every deadly sin, every dwarf in Snow White, or a really bad week. So the first of these lightning strikes happened in 1942 and the last was in 1977. This means that, if my math is correct, that's 35 years of just fucking being absolutely bullied by Zeus. Like by the time of the first strike, Roy is 30 years old and by the time of the last one, he's 65. That's fucking bonkers. Now, as you've probably expected, we're gonna be going through all seven of them, so let's not stall any longer and start with the first one. April 1942. Roy is inside of Shenandoah Park, and he is up in one of those firewatch towers, like in that video game, uh, Flame Searcher, or whatever it's called. Uh, and Roy is sitting there, doing a damn good job looking out for fires because he's looking directly at one. For you see, this tower was newly built and they hadn't had time to install a lightning rod on top of it, so lightning had just struck it seven to eight times and it is now on fire. Now, Roy is a pretty clever guy because he sees this and he thinks to himself, I should probably not be inside here as it goes up in flames. So he leaves the tower. Now, as you may know, lightning usually prefers to strike at the highest possible point. So Roy leaving and walking next to this high tower shouldn't really be a big problem. But alas, Pew. add a lightning strike there. 
The lightning bolt hits Roy directly, uh, but not in his head. It hits him in his right foot, leaving a hole in his shoe. And then it goes up his right leg, burning off a half inch strip of skin uh, along his entire right leg, apparently. Now, personally, I think it's kind of strange that the lightning apparently hit the tower seven to eight times, but nowhere around the tower until Roy comes out and then it hits him and not in the head, in the fucking foot. It's almost as if something had it out for poor old human conduct, uh, for poor old Roy. Roy, that's his name. Now let's fast forward 27 years to July of 1969. Now Roy is driving down the road in his car, minding his own business, probably thinking about those beans. And if you know even the first thing about electricity science, or if you're a huge fan of Lost, then you know that sitting inside of your car during a lightning storm should be keeping you safe because the car turns into a, say it with me now, Faraday cage. Good job, I knew you weren't an idiot. I know you didn't say it. I know you lied. I know you didn't say anything. Stop pretending. Stop lying. This is like sixth grade science. You should know this. Why don't you know this? What went wrong? Answer me, why don't you know this? That's why you can imagine the shock on Roy's face no pun intended, when lightning suddenly strikes. It didn't, however, strike his car. It struck a nearby tree and bounced off that tree in through his open car window. This knocked him unconscious and the car kept rolling and it stopped just before the edge of a huge cliff. His eyebrows and eyelashes were completely burned off and his hair was on fire when he woke up. Now, July 1970, so exactly one year after the car incident, Roy is out in his backyard doing whatever it is that he's doing in his backyard when suddenly he's struck by lightning. And to me, there's something to the fact that this time he wasn't even out in the big national park. He was just in his yard. Like I'm imagining this Americana, uh, like suburbia heaven and, and people are just all out. Some dudes just walking a lawnmower like, oh, hello neighbor. Kids are like running around, pushing a wheel with a stick. Wives are wistfully looking at their husbands, flipping hamburgers on a grill when suddenly it's just like a and everyone turns their heads to Roy's house. And sure enough, there's Roy struck by lightning. Technically, it struck a nearby power transformer and then bounced right into Roy's shoulder, but yeah, that's the third time. Fast forward yet again, this time two years into the spring of 1972. Roy is working one of his normal shifts at the Shenandoah National Park. If I understand correctly, he is inside this time and he's just doing his normal work business when suddenly <laughs> lightning strikes. Again, Roy's hair catches fire, so he desperately tries to put it out with his jacket, but to no avail. He rushes into the bathroom, but ah, oh, he can't fit his head under the faucet. He looks around, finds a towel, takes the towel, puts it under the faucet, and then puts out the fire that's burning on his head. Now, Roy here wasn't the superstitious type, but after being struck by lightning three times in the matter of just a couple of years and four times in his life in total, he became a little stitious. Apparently, at this point in his life, he started expressing that he thought that some power was looking to destroy him. From this point going forward, Roy would always carry with him a little flask of water just in case his hair would catch fire so he could put it out. He would also, anytime he encountered a storm while out driving, lay down in the passenger seat and just wait it out. And honestly, good. Yes, of course do those things. This is correct to me because you've been struck by lightning four times. People who say that Roy was just being paranoid or that he was just very, very unlucky, to me kind of come off as if they haven't fully grasped the situation here. Because as far as I know, I haven't met a single person who's been struck by lightning and chances are neither have you. So let's just for a second imagine that you have this friend. Uh, let's call him Rod. Now one day you get a phone call learning that Rod has been struck by lightning. Terrifying, of course, but he's okay and he's recovering. You both move on with your life and 30 years later, you get another phone call. Rod was fucking struck by lightning. Again. You go, that's wild. Rod was struck by lightning when we were younger as well. That's, that's crazy. Okay, thank you for telling me. Bye-bye. I don't know who that is called, just to tell you that. Maybe it's Rod himself. Hope you're doing okay, buddy. Okay, get well. Okay, bye-bye.
better make sure. <laughs> After this and you learn that he's okay, he's recovering, maybe you even make a joke like, you know, oh, turns out that lightning does strike the same place twice, huh? Then one year later, the same thing happens once again. And at this point, you probably go, okay, this is fucking wild. Rod has gotta be like the most unlucky guy on earth. Because like, yes, it is crazy, but he's also a park ranger. He's exposed to more storms than most people probably. So it's like, it still makes sense at some level, even though it's highly unlikely. But then it happens a fourth time. And as far as I'm concerned, this is the point where you go, no, 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 this, no, this makes no fucking sense. I don't know what's going on, if it's a demon or a spell or if it's God or whatever it is, but some shit is going on with Rod. And if you agree with me on that, remember now, there are three incidents left before we're done with all of the times that lightning struck this one guy. It's just fucking baffling to me. Uh, anyway, uh, check this out. Ever heard of a patreon.com? I have a patreon.com and it's the, it's the website where I uh, get paid if you pay me. I have at this point uh, 43 patrons. After taxes, that means that I make about $200. And while I'm very grateful, for the patrons that I do have. Editing these videos uh, take a whole lot of time and I wish that I could uh, come out with them a little more often, but I simply can't uh, because I need to pay my rent. That's why I think you should go to patreon.com slash and become a Patreon so that I can make the dumb videos for you and you can watch them while also losing a little bit of, of the money you've made. Thank you so much for the consideration. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna be fired out of this cannon. Ah, I can't believe they shot me so far with the cannon. Ah! Strike number five. August 7, 1973. Again, Roy is driving in his truck through Shenandoah National Park when suddenly he sees a storm cloud forming. Roy does the intelligent thing and immediately stops his car, turns it around and goes in the opposite direction of the storm cloud. He's now driving away from the storm cloud and he reaches up to adjust his rear view mirror and that's when he sees it. The cloud seems to be following his car. Roy steps on the gas, he swerves right, he swerves left, he goes down some little bush ass back road, he goes up some other road, he swerves around and eventually loses the cloud, luckily. He stops the car, leans back in his car seat, takes a deep breath, probably says something along the lines of like, not today, Suze, not today. I mean, citation needed, obviously, but let me have this. He opens his car door, steps outside and takes two or three steps before he is struck by lightning. <laughs> I'm sorry, that fucking sucks, Roy, man. I'm sorry, buddy. He opens his car door, steps outside and takes two steps before being struck by lightning. It hits him in his left arm and then travels all the way down his left leg and into the ground where it passes over to his right foot and goes up his right leg up to his knee. Roy, still conscious, manages to crawl along the ground up to his car, open the door and get out the flask of water that he keeps in there to pour on his head to put out the fire that is burning there. And honestly, at this point, Roy, buddy, shave your head. You're getting up there in age, shave it off, okay? You don't need this. You don't need... I, 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 I don't want for him to go around with a flask and worry about his hair burning. Just get rid of the hair. And I know the hair isn't like the main concern. Uh, that would be the lightning bolts repeatedly striking him. But like, maybe we could remove this one smaller stress factor. I don't know, just an idea. Three years later, in June of 1976, Roy is struck by lightning yet again. Not much is known about this specific case, but what we do know is that he said he saw a lightning storm cloud forming way over there. He tried to escape it, but it was like it was following him. And also we know that uh, his hair caught fire, because of course it did. And then finally, and I don't know if you can be ready for this one, We've got the final strike. It's June the 25th, 1977. Roy is standing fishing from a small body of water somewhere in Shenandoah Park when suddenly the sound of thunder can be heard. And before he has much time to react, lightning strikes him right in the noggin. The lightning travels down through him, burning his chest and his stomach, and Roy collapses 
to the ground. He does however manage to stay conscious, so he gets up on shaky legs and turns towards his car, only to be met with a very unexpected sight. A fucking bear. Approaching him, out from the woods, is a bear who comes up and starts attempting to steal the trout that Roy has fished up before being struck by lightning for the seventh time in his life. Now Roy, oh Roy, Roy won't stand for this. Now Roy bends over and picks up a tree branch from the ground and strikes the bear with it and the bear retreats into the woods. Presumably it took a look at this absolute machine of a man and it got that same sort of instinct as elephants when they predict a flood coming and it realized that whatever it is that is standing in front of him it's not quite beast, it's not quite man, but it is something that I don't want to fuck with and it decided that it's better to just back off. Roy then makes his way over to his car, opens the door, grabs his flask of water and puts out the fire that is burning in his hair because Apparently, it was just continuously burning throughout this entire bear ordeal. And those were the seven times that Roy Sullivan got struck by lightning. Now let's get into some additional information and my thoughts on this whole wacky ordeal. First of all, Roy claimed to have been struck by lightning one more time when he was a child. He was out in a field with his dad cutting wheat when he swung up his scythe and it was hit by lightning. Apparently it didn't hurt him or anything and because he couldn't prove it, he just never tried to claim it as one of the times that he got struck by lightning, which lends just a little more credibility to the rest of his stories. Another thing worth mentioning is that at one point, Roy and his wife was out in their backyard hanging clothes when suddenly Roy's wife was struck by lightning. And nothing in the world can convince me that that lightning bolt wasn't meant for Roy and that his wife just pretty much accidentally did a get down Mr. President and got hit instead. All right, and that bear incident, apparently according to Roy, that was the 22nd time that he had hit a bear with a stick in his lifetime. Don't worry about the whole microphone situation here. The cable is, it's a mess if I try to take it out. How the fuck do I hold this comfortably? So I'm almost done editing this video and I have a weird little update. I just got out of the shower and I sat down to edit this a little bit more and I needed a high resolution picture of Roy. So I went on google.com and I got led to a Facebook post. Now in the comments of this Facebook post, I found the son of Roy Sullivan. And I'm shooting this on my phone because I just felt like I needed to get this in here somehow because Roy's son has been struck by lightning twice. And I don't know. That's wild. I have nothing to add. Uh, but I just couldn't uh, end this video without mentioning that because it's not on the Wikipedia or anything. I, I found it yeah, here in the Facebook comments. Uh, okay, back to the video. On a sadder note, wrapping up Roy's tale is that he was found in his home on the morning of September 28th of 1983, dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Roy was 71 years old at the time of his death. Now before we end things off, let me summarize a little bit. Roy was an enigma. But I suspect that some of you are pretty skeptical to these stories. I mean, were there any witnesses to any of these lightning strikes? And that's completely valid, and the answer is that no, there weren't usually any witnesses to the lightning strikes. However, all of the lightning strike incidents were officially documented by his superintendent, R. Taylor Hoskins. But again, I should note that Hoskins was never present at any time that Roy was struck by lightning. Roy did, however, have proof of some of the lightning strikes from the damages to his body and his clothes. And as far as I understand it, he did require medical attention after each of them. All that being said, I do think that if your biggest takeaway from a story like this is to try and poke holes or find evidence of every detail in the narrative, let me save you some time, there isn't proof. As a somewhat skeptical person myself, I get where you're coming from 100%, but I do think that there's a time and place for everything. Official documents like police reports, proof please. Are the details of a story like this going to be used in like a court case? Proof please. Is someone using a story like this to push an agenda? Proof please.
But it's some guy with a mustache and a Hawaiian shirt in a YouTube video telling this story for entertainment purposes. I think we can have a little wiggle room. Obviously my opinion's biased though. Personally, I like to believe that all of this did happen to Roy, but that it has a scientific explanation. Perhaps Roy had a very specific skin condition with a very specific cream, and in that cream is a very specific chemical that reacts to the very specific metal in his forest ranger badge, and when those rub against each other, it creates a whole lot of static that like sticks to him and whenever lightning comes it prefers to go to there. I just made all of that up but hopefully you see where I'm coming from. Because the probability of a guy being struck by lightning this many times is so minuscule. In fact I don't have it written down uh, but let me add it right here. But I want it to be true. Anyway, that's all for this video. Now, my battery in the camera is dying, so let's do this outro really quick. No retakes. Uh, my Patreon producers are on the screen right now. The rest of my patrons are on the screen right now. If you like this video, then you'll probably definitely like this video where I talk about the phenomenon of spontaneous human combustion. I can't believe I actually did that in one take. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.